Hey, hey, thanks for stopping in. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Wednesday. It is December 13th. Now, tomorrow being Thursday, I've got my live streaming event. Me and my co-host, Taylor, we're on for about an hour, and we're there to talk to you about stocks you want to talk about. I share stocks with you all week, so this gives you a chance to throw your tickers at me. I'll go over the information, Taylor will go over the charts, and we'll give you our opinion on it. Now, we're only there for about an hour, and you can only look at so many stocks, and sometimes we get more than we can look at. So if you really want your stock looked at, get it in the queue early. I put up a placeholder for this video around noon, so you can drop your ticker in early. That'll give me a chance to look at it early, too. It is first come, first served. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Thursdays. So what I like to do on this show is just share my due diligence with you on hot OTC and penny stocks. I am a day trader. I trade all day and I trade penny stocks. So I find a lot of stocks that have heat. And when I find these stocks, I'm normally looking at the charts. I spend a lot of time looking at charts because you can look at a lot of charts in a short amount of time. And just at a glance, you can see if there's heat in that chart. You can see if there's volume coming in or a breakout setup. Well, when you find a chart that has heat, then take the time to go through all the press releases and the filings. When you find a hot piece of news to match your hot chart, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you. And I've got three for you right now. First stock we're going to take a look at is Reshape Life Sciences, ticker RSLS. Folks, this is a trifecta. She has got every box ticked for what I look for in a hot penny stock. She's got a hot chart. It is an atypical breakout chart that's breaking out right now. She's got fresh, hot news and a low float. It is beautiful, folks. So RSLS Reshape Life Sciences, she finished today at about 38 and a half cents and she is up just over 53% today. She is on the NASDAQ. I love these penny stocks on the major exchanges because you get to trade them for free. You get to trade them pre-market, after-market. And let's face it, folks, there's a lot more volume and a lot more money up on the major exchanges. So what does RSLS do? Well, we get a great description over here in the most recent news press. Reshape Life Sciences is America's premier weight loss and metabolic health solutions company, offering an integrated portfolio of proven products and services that manage and treat obesity and metabolic disease. The FDA-approved LAP band system provides minimally invasive long-term treatment for obesity and is a great alternative to the more invasive surgical stapling procedures like the gastric bypass. Now, they've got two other products. We're not going to be really focusing in on those, but they have the investigational diabetes black stem neuromodulation, this is for the treatment of type 2 diabetes and metabolic disorders. And their third product is the Abalone. This is a balloon technology. It's non-surgical. You swallow this balloon. It is a gas-filled intragastric balloon that is designed to provide long-lasting weight loss. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Shazam! Whoa! Look at that massive explosion in volume, folks. She's been doing roughly a million shares over the last 30 days. Today, she did more than 200 times that to 202 million shares. Or you can think of it this way. She had an increase in volume of over 20,000%. Share structure for the company. Well, I told you they had a low float. Outstanding share count is only 3.4 million. And your float can't be higher than the outstanding share count. So even though I don't know what the float is, I know it is a super small float, whatever it is. Speaking of super low, their market cap is way down there at 866000 Financials for the company. Back in 2019, they were at $3.2 million, climbed up to $13.6 in 2021, and now have dropped back to $11.2 million in 2022, and they got to keep over 50% of that in profit. Looking at her quarterlies, well, it looks like she's actually been falling over the last year. She was back here at 2.8, fell to 2.7, had a little jump at the end of the year, and she's come down to 2.2 for the last two quarters. And looking at the most recent quarterly report that just came out, they are at 2.2, 2.3 million. So they're just holding steady water right now. But they're looking good. Balance sheet for the company. Cash, cash equivalents, what they got in the bank, 4.6 million. 
Total assets is 11.8 million. Total liabilities is less, 5.1 million. That means we have positive stockholder equity of $6.7 million that we can divide amongst all the shareholders. How do we do that? It's called the price. Divide the outstanding shares into that number, that stockholder equity, and that should give you a rough guesstimate of what the price should be. Taking a look at the disclosures. All right, we've got a recent 10Q here, their quarterly report, lots of information in there. Then you have an 8K, which always accompanies that. Then we've got another 8K here. This is a notification from the NASDAQ. They have been under a dollar for too long. The NASDAQ has a minimum bid price requirement. You go under a dollar for too long, they'll kick you off the major exchange down to the OTC. And that's been happening a lot here recently. So they've got six months to fix this from the date they were notified, October 10th. So that takes it to April 10th. They have to get the price up over a dollar, close over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. Once they do that, they're out of hot water. We got a long ways to go though. Now there is one other way to fix that. If we don't bid it up to a dollar, they've got to do a reverse split or get thrown down to the OTC. It's not a good scenario here. So hopefully this news that I'm going to share with you is going to be enough to push this price up over a dollar. Let's take a look at that news now. Now there really isn't a whole lot of news over here. Most of it is about their financials, except for the hot piece of news that came out today. They tell us here that Reshape Life Sciences receives FDA PMA supplement approval for its next generation lap band 2.0 flex. A PMA supplement is a filing that you give to the FDA when you make an improvement on a product they've already approved. So if you want to sell the new improved product, you've got to get the FDA's approval. And they got that. Reshape Life Sciences announces that the FDA has granted approval of the PMA supplement for the company's next generation enhanced lap band 2.0 flex. This is a historic event for Reshape that is expected to be a key growth catalyst for the company's lap band franchise. Now here's the difference between the old and the new. You saw a picture, right? That band, that clamp that goes just above the stomach on the intestine coming down. Compared to our current lap band, the lap band 2.0 has a new feature called Flex Technology, which acts as a relief valve, allowing larger pieces of food to more easily pass through the narrowed passages created by the band. Specifically, the band momentarily relaxes before returning to its resting diameter, therefore minimizing the discomfort caused by the passage of large pieces of food. So that's their new improved product, which I guess they've gotten a lot of feedback from customers. You swallow something too big, what happens? It gets stuck there, has to wait to be digested, and I can't imagine what that feels like. So this has got to be a big deal. And here in America, folks, not that I have any idea about it personally, but obesity is a problem. And it's a battle. It is a serious battle, and sometimes it takes more than just a diet you've actually got to get some medical attention and this can help them. And the chart folks, it is showing the excitement. It is on fire right now. We're going to be doing our charting now on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We are looking at ticker RSLS, Reshape Life Sciences. That's a six month, four hour view. Almost six months ago, we had a high of $4.10. That hit in April. She has had a long drawn out fall, hitting a low here of 18 and a half cents. And she did that at the end of October. Now, as you can see, as she was falling, she had some big spike pushes through that 200 and a whole bunch of little jumps all the way downhill. Then she hit this low and all of that stopped. She has just been going sideways doing nothing, which is actually a good thing. She's done falling. She's on the floor. She's just waiting now for the 200 to get close so that she can get on top of it and start the run. And that's exactly what you see here. Once that 200 starts to level out and get close, she starts pushing towards it, makes her first move to break it. Her second move to show her solid intention of wanting to climb went way up high, came down no lower than where she started. That is a key signal on this four hour chart. This looks brilliant. Now that doesn't mean when she falls here, it's a losing game. No, I'm just talking about the next bar. So you watch her come down and you wait for her to break out because she's looking for an opportunity. And right here, two days ago, she took off. 
She went from about 23 cents up to 60 cents. You're looking at an easy 250% gains before she came down to roughly 38 cents. Now she is sitting well above her nine day SMA right now. That was a strong run, big fall and a solid landing. All of our SMAs have just crossed the 200 and all of them now, including the 200 are pushing up. They all look evenly spaced. I like that. We've had good strong volume the last two days. Nothing to talk about before that. Now the volume has gone light at the back half of the day, but there was a lot here today. So we're gonna keep our eye on this. 200 times her normal volume. Our oscillators had a lot of heat in them, but that fall from 60 cents to 38 cents is cooling them off just a little bit. And our RSI, it has come out of the overbought and is down there at 64 right now. Taking a look at our 20 day, one hour view. Not a lot going on, right? She is just laying on this 200. Had a little bit of dip here, probably just stretching her legs. Came back up laying on that 200. There's that first bounce back to the 200 and then the big rip and a fall back. And right now I can see she is wrestling with that nine day SMA. She came down and went through it, came back up and back through it. And now it's like she's whittling her way, trying to get back on top of that. This shows me she wants to climb. She is fighting falling. She's trying to get herself back on top of the steps so she can start pushing herself up again. All of our SMAs look sweet. They are all combed nicely and going uphill. Our oscillators, they are cool. That was a big drop from the early part of the day to the back half of the day. And all of our oscillators are showing that right now. Looking at our five day, five minute. So there's our 200 and it's pretty much hanging around that too. You notice that once she got over the 200 on the four hour chart, she is hanging on the 200s on all of these other time slots. And it looks like all of this run has been aftermarket, pre-market for the most part. She opened up today at roughly 40 cents and she took off to 59, came back down, had a bounce midday and then fell back down with another secure landing right on top of the 200, which she pulled up hard, right? That was way down here at 24 cents. She pulled that 200 day SMA up to 39 and she's at 38 right now. And we can see there is aftermarket activity. There's a lot going on with this stock. Now, by the time you see this, the aftermarket activity will be done today. But if you're watching it today, you're going to be able to see tomorrow's activity. And I would watch this tomorrow morning. She could have some activity. I think she's going to continue on. Now, looking at it in the short run, I see some potential for run. Looking at her down the road, I see some potential for growth. Folks, this looks like a hot product in a country that could put it to use. So I'd be putting RSLS on my watch list and maybe even getting myself a position right now before she takes off. Now I'm willing to bet all my underwear that you know this company. This is Liquor House, ticker LQR. There has been a lot of talk about this company online, good and bad. She just came onto the market in August, had a good showing the first day, but since then it has been a downhill trend, really hard. So hard that she went under a dollar for too long. She was contacted by the NASDAQ to fix it. Well, we didn't bid the price up, so they had to do what they had to do, and it was a reverse split just two weeks ago, a one in 60. So what we've got now is a very low float. The chart's looking good. She is starting her breakout move right now. The volume is coming in right now, and for the last month, they have had a ton of news. Now is a great time to be looking at liquor. She finished today at $2.14 and did just under 66% gains today. She is on the major exchange, the NASDAQ. These penny stocks on the major exchange come with benefits, right? No transaction fees, trade at pre-market, after-market. You don't get any of that with OTC stocks. So what does Liquor House do? Well, they don't produce alcohol. They don't make it. They sell it for other people. Liquor House provides digital marketing and brand development services for the alcoholic beverage businesses in the United States. Its primary business includes the development of limited batch spirit brands and marketing internal and external brands through an exclusive agreement with an e-commerce portal. The company serves individual consumers, wholesalers, and third-party alcohol brands. 
So what was her relative volume today? Oh, we got another explosion. What is that? About 30, 31 times her normal volume going from just under a quarter million shares to just over 6 million shares today. Share structure. We got ourselves another low float, folks. We are at 3.3 million outstanding. Now, our float could even be a lot lower than that. I have no idea how low it is. I just know it's not going to be any higher than 3.3. It is a fantastic share count. Market cap is at 4.3 million. Checking out those financials. Now, to be honest, I don't think any of these financials have anything to do with the company. They just got the company August of this year. So, 2021 and 2022 are going to have nothing to do with them. And then looking at the quarterlies, these just go up to June. But they do have one quarterly report filed right now. The last quarter, they did $101,000. Compared to last year, when they were in business but were a private company, they did $129,000. So they have dropped a little bit since then. And there's no need to look at the uh, balance sheet because that only goes up to June of this year as well. Taking a look at those disclosures, we've got a few 8Ks here. Most of them just aren't relative to us, but this 8K here was. This was the NASDAQ notification that they weren't meeting the minimum bid price requirement. And we know what they did there, the reverse split. So diving into that news, which there is a lot of. Look, folks, all that news is one month. All of it. Don't worry, we're only going to dive into the most recent piece. But I do want to headline these to you so you can see everything they're doing right now. This piece of news came out on the 13th of November, and there's a lot of information just in the headline. Liquor House Inc. and Cabal Tequila partner for dynamic marketing and awareness campaign, paving the way for Costco shelf placement in California via Alpha Distro Partnership. So we got a partnership here with Cabal Tequila, partnership with Alpha Distro, and it looks like they're getting their products into Costco. Liquor House repurchases 1.4 million shares. I mean, it was nice them doing a reverse split, but now they're buying more of them too. Here is where they told us about the reverse split. Here is where they enacted the reverse split on the 28th of November. Then they went and bought more shares back, another 3 million shares. Come on, folks. How can you say anything bad about a company? All right, they've been losing a little bit of money. They just did a reverse split, but now we've got a low float and they're whittling that down. I have got no problems with liquor. The next piece of news at the very end of November, the company announces analysis coverage updates by Litchfield Hills Research, reiterating a buy rating and a $5 price target. The company celebrates record-breaking Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend with CWSpirits.com. They were selling a lot of booze, weren't they? The company unveils Bavage, all-new, direct-to-consumer e-commerce site. The company announces marketing partnership with Brody's Crafted Cocktails. Whew, that's a lot of news, right? And then the news that came out today. Liquor House partners with Soda Jerk for a new campaign to boost buzz in the growing ready-to-drink beverage market. So they tell us here that the Liquor House has partnered with Soda Jerk for a new campaign to boost buzz in the growing ready-to-drink beverage market. The company is thrilled to announce its new marketing campaign for Soda Jerk. This campaign is tailored to create awareness and generate excitement around Soda Jerk's ready-to-drink alcoholic beverages, specifically their infused root beer and their orange cream flavors. Now, this company's been working with Soda Jerk since 2020. This is just a new campaign they've been given. Now, according to Soda Jerk, the root beer shots have earned gold medals for two years, 2020 and 2021, and the orange cream shot earned a silver medal in 2021 at the World Spirits Competition in San Francisco. So it's got to be pretty good stuff. I'd be willing to try it. So that's what's going on, folks. Business is growing, the shares are coming down, and the chart is getting hot. That's really why we're looking at it. Let's go take a look at that chart. 
Oh my God, folks, you're not going to believe what just happened. I've been gone for 45 minutes. There was an accident just down the road from me, and it is pretty bad. So I was out there rubbernecking a little bit, and I've wasted some time. So I don't think I'm going to get around to that third stock today. My bad. So taking a look at Liquor House, ticker LQR, this is a very peculiar chart, folks. This is a six-month, four-hour view, and it encompasses the entire chart for the company. They came on the market August 10th, and they hit a high of $435. Never, never did they get that high. So why does it say that? Because they adjusted the chart for the reverse split. I hate when they do this. They did that reverse split back here on November 28th, a 1 in 60. So you should see a big, huge green bar here. Because as they decrease the shares by 60 times, they multiply the price up by 60 times. So we should see whatever the price was here, 60 times up. Well, what we got here is a jump from a buck 30 to $3.05. So where's the reverse split? They adjusted the chart. What they do is everything behind the reverse split, they multiply times 60. I don't know why. So if you take this $435 high and divide it by 60, it's just a little over $7. And that's the true high. The problem here is that's going to stay there forever. Someone comes into this company a year from now, they're doing their research, they're checking to see the ultimate high for the company. That's what they're going to see. That's misleading. It's false information. I do not like it. So let's just focus in now after the reverse split. None of that has been touched. So she has been falling. She came down to this low of 95 cents. That was just two days ago. And it was yesterday she started to work her way up over the 50. And today when the news came out, she jumped. Bars got a lot bigger. She moved from about a buck 30 here up to $2.40. So you're looking at just under 100% gains. Lots of volume and everything is moving in the right direction right now. And our oscillators back that up. Our PPO is now starting to push up. Our MACD has crossed the signal line. Lots of green bars. And our RSI is clear up there at 87. Woo! And look at all this aftermarket activity. Still pushing it. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So there's our downhill trend. I'm not going to look back here. That high is behind the split. You got to divide that by 60. So she's going sideways, hovering over this 200 haul. We talk about that a lot. The 200 haul is like your 200-day SMA. It just gives more credence to current prices. And penny stocks have been paying a lot of heed to the 200 haul. She came down here. Looks like she tagged it almost. Started climbing up. Slowed down right up underneath the 200. And then bolted. Vroom. And look, folks. She is totally flat now and just now starting to turn up. We just had our first golden cross with the 20-day SMA crossing. Here comes our 50 and our 200 haul behind it. This looks like it still wants to climb. After market shows, there is still excitement about this stock. All of our oscillators are going to the moon or on fire in the one-hour chart. This is looking great. Coming down to that five-day, five-minute view. So she was on a downhill trend, suckling up to that 200-day SMA, crouched, and then pounced. That's what you got here. She just came lower so that she could go higher, just like a cat would do. She got up on top of that 200, bounced off at once, and took off. It's not anywhere near the 200 now, and it is climbing strong. The price is bouncing off of the 50 a lot, but she is climbing with these bounces, and she is climbing steadily after market right now. All of our SMAs look good. Volume is increasing. Oscillators are all starting to come back up. They did come down here, but you can see they're all in recovery right now. Everything really looks good with this company, folks. The low float is really going to make a difference here. If they were to sell 10 million shares tomorrow and there's 3.3 million in the float, that means they would have to sell every share out there three times over. Well, what if some people don't want to sell their shares? Well, now there's not enough shares to go around. That's called supply and demand. That forces the price to go up. 
I like liquor. I like liquor right now. I'm looking at this for a short hold, and I'm pr short hold, <laughs> and I'm surely probably going to get into this one. LQR. Now, I did have another stock I wanted to share with you folks. I'm not going to be able to get it to you, but I do want to tell you which one that was. It is EVFM. This is EvoFem Biosciences. They are a company that makes a topical contraceptive for women. No pill, has no hormones in it, and they are being swallowed up by another company for a hundred million dollars. That is E, and <laughs> make sure I get the ticker right for you. That is EVFM. Be sure to do some more due diligence on liquor and the other company as well, folks. You know I don't cover everything. You know what I always say, and I mean it. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.